after a good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody that is on this platform. I bring you greetings from our beautiful country of Belize. And I pray that you guys are also experiencing God's marvelous grace today. It is indeed a privilege that we have to come together in this fashion. And I'm thankful, I'm thankful today for those who thought of this initiative to call God's people back together in prayer. There's no doubt in my mind that in these last days, we need to be more united in prayer. Hence the reason I'm so happy for the theme that you're under today, 24 seven united in prayer. Um, this morning, I wanna, wanna ask you to bow your heads with me as we meditate a little bit on the word of God. Shall we pray? Father God, we are thankful today for your amazing grace, for the love that you have given unto us. As we gathered this morning to surrender our hearts to you and to ask that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness and fill us with your Holy Spirit, we ask today that you would take control of all that we do. Let our minds be stayed on you and help us to experience the joy of salvation today as we go through the business of this day. In your precious name we pray. Amen. It is indeed a privilege for me to come and share with you on this platform about God's powerful answer to prayers. And this morning, I want to focus a bit on united prayer, united prayer. In the text that is found in Matthew chapter 18, verses 19 and 20, Matthew 18, verses 19 and 20. The word of God says to us this morning, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. This is indeed a precious promise uh, from Jesus himself, encouraging us as Christian believers in these last days to put our confidence in the fact that God is still in the business of answering prayers. And I'm thankful because this call for prayer is an urgent call for us as Christians in these last days. There's no doubt we're living in a world that is bombarded by sin and, and, and by destruction and, and by rebellion and a lot of negative that surrounds us in, a day, in our daily lives, in our daily living. But I know without a doubt that as God calls us to prayer, it is a call for victory. It is a call for us to fully accomplish the mission that he has delivered to us as his children. We who have accepted his marvelous grace, we who have accepted his gift of salvation. This morning, I want to encourage you to continue to trust in the God who is able and who answers our prayers. I am blessed by the, the talk from the little book on United Prayer that our World Church has, has put together. And one of the talks, one of the, the, the quotation that I want to show to you this morning comes from the book Manuscript Releases, uh, page, volume nine, page 303 where the servant of the Lord reminds us that through the promise that was given to us in Matthew 18, 19, and 20, it says we are encouraged to pray for success. We are encouraged to pray for success with the divine assurance that our prayers will be heard and answered. If there's one thing that continues to impress me about God, family of God this morning is that he is attentive to our prayers. He's attentive to the needs that we have. He's attentive to the crimes that we often let off in our private time with God when we're on our knees or in, in those times that we are need, need that healing touch, in those times that we need that calm assurance, that blessed assurance that our prayers are being heard by a divine God. We are impressed brothers and sisters because the word says that God will answer our prayers. She also went on to say that this promise of answered prayers 
is made on the condition that the united prayers of the church are offered. Let me pause a bit for that. It calls for us to pray unitedly as a, as a church body. Because when we pray together, something about praying together that is a, is a dynamic part of getting answers to a prayer. She went on to say that promise is made on the condition that the united prayers of the church are offered. And in answer to these prayers, that there may be expected a power greater than that which comes in answer to private prayer. The power, she says, will be given in proportion or proportionate to the unity of the members and their love for God and their love for one another. Now, this is so powerful as we consider what we're doing today. You see, we are called upon to pray, and that is exactly what we're doing. But what the servant of the Lord says, an inspiration that comes through the book as a church, pray together. We are able to move the hand of the omnipotent. We are able to move the hand of God in answers to the requests and the, and, and the, the desires of our hearts. And this is why I'm so happy that as we are gathering together to pray, people from all over the world are united with one motive, one direction, one purpose in mind. That is to come into a closer and connected relationship with the God or a sovereign God, the God who saves, the God who redeems. Brothers and sisters, my friends and family this morning, this God asks us to pray unitedly. Of course, we understand that private prayer is important. There's no doubt in my mind that we should spend more time privately praying and surrendering our hearts to God for God to come through for us in marvelous and, and, and magnificent ways. But the call also goes forth for us to come together as a church body, corporately interceding and talking to God as to a friend opening our hearts to him and asking him to lay upon us like the disciples did on the day of Pentecost and afterwards, lay upon us the burden to see the mission accomplished that he has given to us in this. We are still called upon brothers and sisters to unite in surrender of our lives to God as a church. We're still asked to, 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 to come God in full in the God who we serve. Monsters that we, we serve a mighty God. We serve a God that is uh, always alert and attentive to our needs. We serve a God that says to you that you can trust him. You can trust him with your life. You can, you can trust him with the very things or the burdens that you have in your heart. And you know that he can come true for us. And there's no doubt, brothers and sisters, that there is so much benefit when we come to God corporately and individually for prayer. One of the things that I learned about prayer, when we acknowledge the God who we pray to, when we acknowledge that he's the sovereign God and the one that is able to give us answers to our prayers, we can come to his throne boldly or confidently as Paul reminds us. Because the God we serve is still a God who answers our prayers. And I'm saying to us this morning that whatever burden you have on your heart, whatever challenge you are facing today in your life, in your ministry, God is able to give solution to those problems you see prayer helps us to identify with God and his cause when we come to God and we acknowledge that this is the true God that we are serving this is the true God that we long to honor and adore and to glorify when we come to him we also learn through prayer the mission that he has set forth for us as a church when we come to God in prayer and surrender, brothers and sisters, we identify with God's cause and we, are, we come closer to him in accomplishing that mission that he has given to us. You see, prayer, it does something special for us, my family. It connects us with the living God. This God who says to you and to me tonight and this morning that he cares about you. He cares about what you're going through. He cares about your heart's desires. He cares about your desire for transformation. 
He cares about your desire to see your family, those who have gone astray, be saved. He cares about the, the burden that lays in your heart for a, a job, a better finances for your family, and, and for you to help in the mission of God. God cares about every aspect of our lives. So when we got in prayer, we join lift one accord like the disciples did on the day of Pentecost. We are able to move the hands of God on behalf of his work. Brothers and sisters, there's something else that takes place when we come together united in prayer. And I'm saying this morning that we need to trust God even more. Because the God we serve is a real and living God. You see... When we come to God and surrender, the Bible assures us too that God will hear our prayers. And when we, one of the things that, I, that I, I, I am seeing over and over again, the more I pray, the more I surrender my heart to God, the more God lays upon my heart the burden to see lost men saved in his kingdom. Brothers and sisters, if there's something that you need to understand, every time you get closer to God, God lays upon your life, your heart, your mind, the burden to see lost men saved, the burden to see your own salvation become a reality, the burden to see your walk with God be strengthened, your life be transformed in such a way that wherever you go, your life will be a blessing because you are surrendered to the mighty God. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who saves and who is mighty to save. This God, my friend, says, I want to be a close companion. This God reminds us each and every day that you can lean on his everlasting arms. This God reminds us every day that the burdens that you have can be lifted because Jesus paid the price on Calvary. This God that we serve reminds us that day by day, as we come to him in full confidence, he is able to see us through the victory. Prayer, united prayer, connects us with the mind of Christ. United prayer connects us with the unlimited power and strength in God, who is the sovereign Lord. You see, each day, as we seek for victory, the victory that he longs to give you today, is available as you come in faith, trusting in him. And I'm saying to a church family this morning, God is trustworthy. So the burdens that we've heard through our prayer session this, this, this morning reminds us that you don't have to despair. You don't have to lose hope. You can have full confidence because God cares about you. And when we come together in prayer, the Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in the midst. He is there to bless. He is there to bring victory. And I'm reminded that he's there to bring healing. You know, sometimes you worry about the things of life. We worry about how we're going to get the next meal or how we're going to get the finances to pay our bills. I am saying in confidence this morning, brothers and sisters, that we can see through God's eyes that he is willing to hear and answer our cries. He's willing to supply all our needs, as the Bible says according to his riches in glory. Hence the reason why it is so important for us this morning to continue to trust this God because he's a God who wants us to have his eternal salvation. He's a God who says to us today, you can be saved if you put your faith and your confidence in me. The servant of the Lord says in another uh, uh, portion of, of that great book, it becomes Christian education, fundamentals of Christian education. She says, brethren should stand shoulder to shoulder, uniting their prayers at the throne of grace, that they may move the arm of the omnipotent. Heaven and earth will then be closely connected in the work, and there will be joy and gladness in the presence of the angel of God when the lost sheep is found and restored. If there's one burden I want you to ask God to put on your heart today, brothers and sisters, is to see lost men saved in the kingdom. And I'm encouraging us today for us to connect so much with God that we put ourselves in a position that God can use us always to be a channel of his blessings. Wherever we go, wherever we are found, never be ashamed to be identified with the people of God. 
Never be ashamed to be identified with the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God will lead us to everlasting victory. As our minds become stayed in Christ, as we join our voices in prayers throughout this world, united prayers, asking for God's spirit to be poured upon us as his children, asking for God to come in and take away selfishness and rebellion from our lives, asking for God to use us in whatever way he desires to use us, that we can truly be a channel of his light and blessings. My brothers and my sisters this morning, never give up. Keep trusting in this God because he wants you to be saved in his kingdom. And he wants us as a church to fulfill his mission of helping lost men back into this kingdom. And the Bible declares that soon and very soon, Jesus is coming again. And I don't know about you, but I want to be counted among the saved. I don't know about you, but I want to be among those that will be marching into the, into the gates of heaven with all my family, with all my friends that have been saved, face to face with Jesus. I want to see him. And I want to be there to experience the glory of his salvation. I encourage you this morning, whatever burden that is going in your heart, in your mind, trust in God. Join your voices together in prayer and ask God to fit us for eternity. Ask him to shower us with his Holy Spirit. And wherever sin still exists in our lives, ask him today to eradicate sin from us, eradicate selfishness from our lives that we can truly be light bearers of this kingdom, helping many others to know Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. As I pray for you, I ask you to pray for us here in Belize, that as we continue to minister the word of God, many families, may God richly bless you today. May you experience the joy of salvation today as we continue to unite our voices in prayer and a prayer chain from the wrongest world will move the hand of God for the salvation of souls. God bless you and keep you today. And may we be used today for his glory is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.